Welcome everyone to today's video, a quick soldering episode. As mentioned and announced on previous videos and live streams, we want to build a Apple keyboard ADB, Apple desktop bus to USB converter thing ourselves. Because as you have seen in my previous videos from the Apple Macintosh 8100, I have this Apple desktop bus keyboard that I personally have never used. And as usual for that day and age, this is using Apple desktop bus, not pin compatible with AT or PS2 keyboards or something, obviously not USB. And to build ourselves this converter, we got ourselves here some Teensy 2.0 Atmel AVR microcontroller that I just for an initial test flashed here some firmware onto already, just with DVU, I think, or actually Teensy loader, CLI. I will post a link there below and maybe make a dedicated episode for this, but today we will now solder here the adapter. Apple desktop bus is mini DIN, 4 pin, and for this I got here a S-video cable from stock, because who would need a S-video cable? And we cut this just in half. And then we can either, what we like more, build here some directly to be plugged into the keyboard thing, or if you want this cable, from Apple the other way around. And of course you can also get a PCB mounted mini DIN thing, just I wanted to have here some prototype stuff. So this is just what we do here for a quick test. And the reason we actually do this at all is I noticed this mechanical Apple keyboard is actually not too bad. And I thought for I buy here 400 or so bucks another mechanical keyboard I can also use what I have here on the shelves and otherwise have never used. And this is of course also the nice things of do-it-yourself stuff that you can actually make use of things like this. And we are lucky that this cable does not have shielding. We're lucky and lucky. Usually I don't like this very much when this cheap Chinese cables don't have shielding because in my opinion they should be shielded. But whatever for us this makes this slightly more easy. We need here just ground and data and VCC or something. Let's quickly put there some solder and measure which pins of which and then just solder the three or so because we have here ground, VCC, data, maybe mouse or something, was it mouse, and also some standby. I'll show you the pin out in a second. And then we just solder this to the PCB of the Teensy. And also there are Multiple, where did I even put this now? Yeah, here. And then we solder this to the pins of this Teensy. And there are multiple projects. Maybe another day we try to compile another one because the only one that had binary firmware to download is not the one that I might like the most. But first I want to see that this works. And then maybe another day, because we need AVR32 for that, we then might compile this ourselves and see if we need to modify something. But Today, just a quick test and finally use this keyboard. Of course, when you buy this mini DIN yourself, you have more control over the pinout. Now we need to measure this, what's used here on this as video cable, but that's not too much of a problem, obviously. Let's Check the pin out. What we need here, actually, maybe it was even included in the README. So this is TMK keyboard firmware collection because this had a binary release. As you know, I'm usually a fan of building from source yourself, but again, another day. Here, so they have really many projects, including ADB keyboard to USB. And here we have so female socket from the front. So this is male, however. So you see the need only data, power, power switch if we want to, and maybe one pull-up resistor. So we female, so this is the other way around, obviously. So let's measure which pins go where and solder this to the PCB. So we need data is pin one, and pin one is here at the bottom. Okay, this is four, four is ground, so this greenish one is ground. This is two, I guess. Two is power switch. 
the white one and this is our pin one so this is data is a red one and vcc is three this should be three vcc this orange and then probably this blue is the auto shield yeah blue is auto shield okay let's go solder this uh, pull up resistor say right here internal one is also used so it's a little bit half optional but maybe we solder it in place there just to be on the safe side so this team they came with this card so we need user port they call it here user port pdo so this is in here i guess that pin and then ground vcc is there and also obviously labeled on the pcb so this was pd zero okay okay so the orange one was vcc then this goes over there maybe the pull up resistor maybe a first try this out the pull up or pull down you pull up vcc and only add it if it doesn't work and if we need it we just solder this to the inside of the pcb here data is one on the other side mirror it should be it's this red one and the data goes to pd0 here pb7 somehow it's not the p is missing there so it's just written d0 there So ground data, shielding not used, and the other is a power switch that we may use another day or something. So then I guess we can test this. And of course you can make yourself a nice case or something to double check this. So let's see, USB goes here. And if you want to be on the safe side, you can measure here the voltages so again VCC and ground are there 3 and 4 up there we can quickly measure this to double check we do not fry the precious Apple keyboard plug this in with the keyboard on this ADB bus either of these daisy chained ports should work left or right depending where you want to plug in your mouse or not And it does nothing maybe it needs a pull up resistor then and we also have a digital scope in case we need to check there more so just for a test vcc and this data zero without cutting you can later reuse it in case you need it differently i use 4.7 kilo ohm just for a test and as expected it works so that was a great fun little project you see this small DIY things you can do in just a couple of minutes I hope you enjoyed this and learned something and I have a second mechanical keyboard to have fun with as mentioned in my initial 8100 video, I didn't like that these home bumps were on the wrong keys, D and K, so I just swapped these keycaps over there to have the home bump at the right location for my typing without looking on the keyboard too much. And if you prefer, you can of course place a PCB in the keyboard, but I want to keep it like this to also use it on the vintage mix.